Hello and welcome. This is Grace New from Feng Shui Serenity and you are watching the YouTube channel. If you are listening to the Feng Shui Serenity podcast, thank you so much for tuning in. One of the reasons that I use YouTube is because often I share a lot of material that is very easy to see visually. But today I want to or I choose to use YouTube is because I want to have this conversation, this very important conversation I want to have with you at the start of the year. And I want to see you in your eyes. I want to connect with you energetically because this is a very important conversation about your destiny. And we have always, or people, always talked about you'll become a creator of your destiny I mean I have been talking about that since I started my business and we always talk about master your destiny but what would be the concrete steps what would be the way truly understand the connection between your destiny and your destiny chart what would be the strategy, you know, after having this awareness? And these are the things I have been contemplating at the start of the year. Especially in the past three or four weeks, I have been receiving a lot of, you know, that you guys putting through the 2023 annual destiny activation. There was a lot of new people coming in as well. Um, and I have been really focused on tuning into a lot of your charts, your desires and intentions for 2023. And this is, first of all, is such a privilege, right? To know your birthday, to know your what you have achieved in 2022 and, you know, what you hold for 2023. And I've noticed many of you have been with me for more than five years. I mean, this is such a privilege. And I feel the universe give me this privilege is not just to give you the guidance um, on a yearly basis and reading your chart. Part of this privilege, I believe, through and understanding my personal chart, I know that these are the groundwork that the universe has given me the opportunity to do so that I can use my gift is to provide some wisdom on this journey of we are discovering our destiny through our destiny chart. And this is my gift. I know this because I've, I'm fully aware of my personal, uh, my own chart. And is that I have this ability to, after seeing, after working continuously, continue to evolve and deepen my work. And also, you know, be blessed with all of your individual stories, witnessing your life path in front of my eyes that I'll be able to distill all this information. I'll be able to see a pattern. I will be able to, to explain the such vast, complicated and intangible topic such as destiny in a way that we can truly master. We can truly um deduce in a way and design in a way that we can live our purpose in the most effortless way. And I feel for the last five years, I've been doing the groundwork and things are start to crystallizing now. And I'm going to deliver piece by piece. And today I want to cover two things. Two very important things. This is what I want to have this conversation. And the first thing is a revelation about your destiny. 
that some, some of you may find this triggering. But for most of you who have been following me, working with me, I believe that you have developed enough spiritual muscle to take this. So it's a revelation. The second thing that I want to share with you is really about how we can fulfill our destiny in a most grounded way. It's a strategy. I'm going to share some examples. Um, Prince Harry is going to be my victim of using his chart. I'm going to um, not uh, like, you know, religious looking at the royals or obsessed with Prince Harry, but only because he's in the news and I'm going to use his chart as an example. So I'm going to share that with you. To, um, to describe these two scenarios that I, I have, um, it just came to me today, this analogy that I want to talk about these two type of charts that, that some of you has the bomb, the ticking bomb in your chart. Well, some of you has the fireworks in your chart. Okay. They're not mutually exclusive. You can have both. But I want to talk about these two different types because they can be very destructive, as you know, a ticking bomb. And it will be such a waste if you have a fireworks in your chart that you miss it. And I'm going to teach you, or I'm actually just going to give you this. The second thing is, like, you know, that how you can strategize this in two different, very different scenarios. So this is what this episode is all about. I'm trying to um, cover all, all this in the um, shortest time possible. <laughs> Um, so let's start with the first one. So the first one is the revelation. What is this revelation about our destiny? Right? I have, um, and this is one of the things I like to contemplate in life. And this is actually my word for 2023 is con um, contemplation. Is to really, you know, look closer to your chart, look closer to our destiny and see the connection. And after I have um, done all this work on the individual level, I, the more I do this, the more that I know that I need to share this truth with you, even I feel it might trigger some of you, is that we were not born equally. As much as we all believe that we want to be equal, we want to start at the same spot, we're not. So let's just take a moment to distill this. I'm only talking about our destiny chart. We were born, we were given this date, this you know date of birth. This is what we were bestowed upon. This is why it's called heaven luck. We were given. There is no choice in it. And the reality that at this point in life, or if you come into this orbit within my world, it is important for you to understand that we were not born equally in terms of our destiny. When it comes to the charts, I know this because I can see the charts, the strength in each of the charts. There is no, I still stand by, by how I always say there is no good or bad charts. But there are charts are vulnerable. There are charts are more resilient. 
And when you're adding into the lock pillar, this gets also very interesting, is a vulnerable chart can go through a very strong period, which becomes resilient. A resilient chart, the birth chart, can go through certain lock pillar and they will become very weak. They become very vulnerable and they need protection. And this is where I want to you to fully actually understand this so that you do not think that you are invincible all the time. On the same token, you do not believe, do not ever believe that you need to succumb to whatever the charts you've been given. Okay, every point in your life that you have a chance, you have a choice to take the power back. So if this has been triggering you or if you think that this is depressing, you know, um, this is the empowering part. And one of the one of very important, I guess, you know, the spiritual practice, and that is very powerful, is acceptance. There are so many people, they could not change their destiny because they are not accepting what they have, not accepting the family they were born, not accepting that, why they are in the situation they are in, blaming others, believe they are victims, Acceptance is a very powerful spiritual practice. And this is where when it comes to your destiny and your destiny chart, I want you to have the strength to face or to fully aware what is your chart. You know, the, what is within your chart? Where at a stage in your life is your chart is actually resilient that you can you can afford there are some people can can afford not to have a feng shui consultation and buy a place and be fine with it live a beautiful life and you know um the um happily ever after the question is is your chart first of all based on your natal energy is resilient enough? And second of all, are you going through a resilient five-year, 10-year luck pillar that you can afford to do that? Because this is a thing that when I see pattern, when I've done hundreds and thousands of, of feng shui consultation, I also read their charts. And, and this is where I often think, okay, how can I help you to prevent certain things from happening? And this is one of them. If you are having a, a you know, um, the, the vulnerable chart, and you are also going through a vulnerable luck pillar, you need to take that precaution. It's just like in 2023, I said, there are a couple of signs you need to take a precaution. Like you don't do risky sports or you don't do certain things that will bring things onto you. And this is where I see clients came after they bought a property again and again prove what happens when you purchase a property at the bad luck pillar. And usually it is a wrong choice. People's life can change significantly after that. Right? This is just an example. Um, so aware be aware of this hand we've been given this have luck what is in your chart because we are not born equally you need to know what the hand you've been given so um the if you know what is the enemy that is easy for you to to conquer it right to um to um to win the battle. The key things is most of people, they move through life 
without knowing this. And this is where I want to bring it, bring this attention and awareness to you. So first of all, you need to know what kind of domain you're playing within, what kind of charts you're moving through, you know, this map of your life path. And that brings me to the second thing that I want to discuss with you, I want to share with you is this two scenario I mentioned about, you know, some in some of the charts that when I actually looking through your 2023 activation, if you have received your report and then you would actually probably I've already shared that inside with you. There is certain configuration that I call it a bomb because it is a ticking bomb. So in Bazi or Chinese astrology, there are certain configuration are considered negative, okay, uh, such as clash. Clash is the most commonly known um, uh, negative configuration because when, and, and a lot of times that you, you know that I talked about the clash month, clash year, and this is what we call the external clash. But what if you have a clash internally within your chart, which means you, you carry this clash throughout your life. And, and this clash sometimes, I mean, physical clash is a, a small percentage. Majority, all these negative configura configurations um, are reflected in our mental state, are reflected in our thinking patterns, how we see life. What is a per perception towards people, the world, the events and circumstance, your life story, what story you are building in your head? They are mostly psychological, this configuration, the negative configuration or what I call this ticking bomb in your chart. You know that they mostly affecting how we what kind of lens we carry to see life and this is important and on the other hand that some of you have this um beautiful sorry coming back it's not just a clash and i think that i mentioned in the previous episode in the 2023 uh, 12 zodiac signs I talked about uncivilized punishment um, that's a more severe one so punishment or penalty they are considered a negative configuration uh, there is also harm and destruction there is uh, different types of configurations in Bazi or in Chinese astrology that are considered negative okay so Normal, normally, I mean, depends on how you respond to this. Um, I believe that it is beneficial to know this because this is the second thing that I want to share with you is in summary is in order to fulfill your destiny. There is certain condition. This is very important. So. In order to fulfill your destiny, there is certain condition in your chart that you need to fulfill in order to trigger certain event. Either it is a bomb or it is a firework. The firework is on some people's chart has this beautiful configuration. They don't know right? For example, there are people's day pillar belongs to the 10 spiritual pillars. These people have gifts. They have the unique way of teaching people, guiding people, spiritual, you know, um, uh, their understanding in terms of the spiritual, um, you know, the um, lessons it's very different. Like, you know, the way when you listen to them, you just suddenly like wake up 
they have the way to express themselves, to teach, to guide, to spark people's inspiration. You know, there's people's child has heavenly doctors. These people are are doctors, real doctors, but that also means they they healers. They heal people without even knowing it. But again, there is certain condition or certain conditions you need to fulfill in order to activate this, in order to set this firework in full bloom. Not just 10 minutes, but sustainably. So these are the two I share, probably feels on the two different um, spectrum, but they're not mutually exclusive. You, you could have both, you can have both, right? In the same chart. And I've seen people who have a certain configuration that can be, you know, destructive, but at the same time, that if we can active the positive side, that you change your destiny. But this is the key thing. The condition is the thing that I want you to fully understand. The bomb in your chart is not going to explore the moment that you were born. And this is where I'm going to use um, Prince Harry's chart to explain why what we see now is the aftermath it's not just, it's the bomb has already went off. What do we see now is the aftermath. The reason I'm sharing this with you and I want you to take action in this circumstance, we do not want to fulfill those conditions. We want to deactivate those triggers of the bomb. We want to disarm the timer of the bomb. Okay, so just going to share this chart for you so that you will see what I mean, even if you don't know much about the charts, okay? So this is Prince Harry's chart, 1984, September 15th. And the configuration in Prince Harry's chart is formed by the rat and the rooster. There is, this is a certain, this is a, fixed configuration based on ba zi, okay? So this is a destruction, what we call destruction. And you may notice that the this is actually also a repeated configuration that he has two rats, one rooster. So very much from the very young age, from the ear pillar, month pillar and day pillar, this configuration or this destruction is actually across most of his life. It may manifest in different ways. For example, when he was young, let's talk about this specific destruction. What does it mean? It means the extreme family relationship. It means the... Um, for whatever reason, you will put in the situation that you have your relationship with your family is under pressure or strain. Okay. And there, from the classic text, there is a specific word to des describe this as well and is to be exiled. And I'm just looking into the dictionary, the Exile means expel and bar someone from their native country, typically for political or other reasons, right? Exile from your own country. And this, this particular word is from a classic text, um, ancient Chinese text, okay? So... What is Harry is actually doing right now is he's because see this highlighted um, 
10 year lock pillar from 38. He is 84, so he's about to turn 39. So he is in the new 10 year lock pillar in the 38 here. But this is what I said, the bomb was not exploded in this 10 years. The bomb was exploded. If we're looking at his 10 year luck pillar is in here where the rag is, 28 to 37, 10 year luck pillar. And in particularly is in the 31 to 36, right? When he turned the 36 year of the rat, that's when the bomb went off because this is what the energy or how the energy works. Okay. Because when the energy of red showing up in the five-year luck pillar and showing up in the year that he has experienced 2020, that's young metal rat, things will explode. Okay, if this is making sense because the rat is part of the destruction in his natal chart. And this is where it's important for you to understand there is a certain configuration is like a ticking bomb. And this is very much the same as a feng shui in your home. People moving into a misaligned feng shui home there is not going to be anything happen to them immediately. But it is only when the year that is actually coming around coincide is whatever the misalignment energy allies, then it is being triggered. Then the circumstance, the events, the illnesses will start to show up. And this is what I want to show you, how this works. Even if you don't understand too much about the configuration, the charts and all that. Hopefully this makes more sense. And this is where in order to not to get the bomb to really explode it, that we need to remove the trigger. So... There is always a choice in our destiny, right? Prior to this crucial five years, you know, when he is 31 to 36, these are the five years that is leading up to the explosion because nothing happens overnight. Not success, not disasters either. There is always a, a different events, a succession of events, a circumstance happens leading up to that triggering. Should have, you know, um, Harry know the configuration in his chart, he would have a choice. This is what understanding your destiny chart can give you, is essentially it's a choice. You can still decide no, this is the, this is the path I want to I want to do. I want to really be destructive. I want to this bomb to go off, right? Because this might lead to a, a evolution or some kind of revolution of the um, the dynasty or whatever he wants to do. He would have a choice, right? But without knowing it, you were putting in the situation and be forced to react or picking up the pieces after the explosion. This is important for you to understand. And this is also part of the empowering or the empowerment I want to give it back to you is do not feel that there is no choice if you are given on this date, if you are given your chart is like this. There is always a choice. And sometimes even after the explosion went off, there is still a choice. The choice is whether you allow this to shadow the rest of your life or 
doing something that is truly empowering you or the people around you. As I mentioned before, most of these negative configurations, and they're all very different, the psychological effect would be very different as well. But most people will believe that they are the victims, okay? They're the victims of certain things that they will never get over it because always there is a deep down, deep down, um, after the, the bomb went off, there is always certain impurities and dust hanging around in their energy field. They will not be able to complete start anew. This is very different comparing to when the fireworks went out, went off. You have glitter everywhere. You trust, you believe in yourself. This is so there is definitely a certain spiritual path you need to take. And this is where most in you know, my coaching containers, this is where we work, you know, towards that certain things that we need to get. We need to really empower ourselves. We need to get over. We need to see beyond what it actually happened to you. But there is always a choice. And tr that choice is really back in your hand, right? And that's one of the examples I want to share with you. Um, to let, allow you to fully understand that there's always things that you can do about even that you can't choose your date of birth, okay? And, ah, this is what I was, uh, I lost track of for a bit. So this is what I was going to, to talk about, the strategy. So now you know, you have the awareness that will have a different strategy designed for people who have a certain configuration in their chart. The strategy is you do not fulfill those condition, right? If we remove a certain configuration, and, and for those of you who have learned the charts with me, the configuration will require two or three signs to be aligned together, right? And that's the condition. And if you have already known what would be the condition in order to set off the bomb, in this scenario, we want to deactivate them. We want to not to fulfill those certain conditions. So working on your mindset, working on your ability to actually to um, fully see what is in your chart is part of the solution, part of the strategy, because then you can disarm it. When, you know, that as the example I mentioned before, if you have a clash, that's always an inner conflict. Sometimes you're self-critical or there is a self-penalty. It's all, always about criticize others, but also criticize yourself. So when you actually know this, you would, every time you start to have judgment towards your action, your things you do, you would actually remember oh, Grace said, there is a self-penalty in my chart. I should really give myself a break, right? So you will be aware, you'll, you'll back off. This is the parts that I feel it will be most crucial for you to change your destiny, starting by aware of it. And... On the other spectrum, if you have this beautiful, um, I use a firework as an um, analogy, you will, you need to know what are the condition to fulfill. So the strategy is very different. You need to know what would be the condition needs to be dry in order to light up this campfire. But I also need a match, right? And I also need the timing. I'm not going to light this during the rain. There is condition 
that you need to fulfill. So this is essentially, I want you to firstly understand in this episode is fully accept that our starting point is not the same. Your chart is not the same as the next person. This should also gives you a lot of relief as well so you can stop comparing to others. When you're setting up your new year resolution or your intention, do not just take what your coach is telling you to do or look at the next person in your industry setting the goal as what she did for her. The question you ask for yourself is, does she have the same chart as yours? And if this is resonating with you guys, and of course, ordering the 2023 uh, annual chart activation is one way to understand this. But I, because of this understanding of my existing clients, and I want to bring this to people who happen to come across this information so they can change their destiny as well. I also designed a three-day challenge coming up in January. So if this is something that you feel is for you or the way I teach is for you, you can sign up uh, following the link below this video that you can join the challenge because this challenge is all about how you can master 2023. So the three-day challenge is going to be hosted on Facebook and it is completely free event. And we're going to take you through some essential uh, way so you can master 2023, okay, through your own inherent destiny chart. And these are the conditions I talked about, right? So in first, uh, on the day one, that we are going to crystallize your vision because usually how we set our intention is to based on, you know, that maybe someone else or maybe someone inspired you to it is all very well but it is also important to understand what is in our chart what does the year the 2023 yin water rabbit is actually guiding me to do based on my chart because everyone depends on your day master or your essence at birth is very different and on day two, this is also one of the condition, right? You need to remember what is your gift, your power, and how you can achieve your goals and desires with the least amount of effort. Most, um, you know, highest possible profitable um, return and joy in 2023 that you need to really understand what is your what is your purpose using myself as an example I know from the start of my journey of my feng shui journey or you know helping people to decode their chart it's not I'm not going to win the competition that I have done the most feng shui in a day or I have done the most charts in a month. Quantity is never my, the things that I would ever pursue. It's irrelevant because I know my gift is about digging deep. I know my gift is to, after doing a certain amount of charts and experience and my own spiritual journey and evolution that I'll be able to stay step back to see pattern and I'm discerning in my journey because and I don't really set my goals based on someone else 
or based on someone else's talent. And I'm fully aware of this. So this is where we close off those energy leaks that I will never strive to do even two feng shui consultation a day because my energy is precious and I do one chart or one feng shui consultation a day so that I can fully immerse in your case. That's what I do. That's based on my essence. That is not to say everyone else has to do my way. They need to design their own essence. And this is what we do on day two. So you will know your power. You will know your gift. And day three is about pinpointing, pinpoint your divine timing. And I always say the divine timing is about the sparks, is the, you know, the match lighting up the fire. And that is not coming all the time. It's in the yearly energy. It's in your five years energy. It's in your 10 year energy. This is where we're going to pinpoint your creative season, your divine timing. That's when it's things, the fireworks go off. And of course, knowing the certain timing, and you can also deactivate if there is a certain configuration in your chart, then it doesn't matter. The bomb becomes irrelevant in your chart. It's just a dead bomb. You have some story to tell, but it will never affect your life if you know this, right? So this is what I want to show you or I want to teach you in the three-day challenge. So feel free to jump in and sign up on that. And it is host on the 27th, 29th, and 28th and 29th of January, 10 to 11, Australian Eastern uh, Daylight Saving Time, I think. Okay, I think that's all I want to cover for this episode. I hope this is not too long and I hope it is beneficial for you to start the year and starting to mapping out and master your 2023. Thank you so much.